Okay, today we're going to be talking about how to solve torque problems. Okay, there's a couple of terms that you should already know, but I'm just going to cover them really fast. So translational, right, means uh, you're shifting positions. You can go anywhere. It doesn't matter as long as you're shifting positions. That's translation. Rotation is staying about in one, staying in one spot, but rotating about an axis. Okay, another term you need to be familiar with before you start is center of mass, right? Center of mass is like the average uh, on where all the mass is on average, if you can find one spot. For example, for boomerang, the center of mass is right about here, okay? So uh, it's halfway in between this way, and then it's also halfway in between, like if you cut it in half this way and that way. So the center of mass is right there on average. Even though it's not on the boomerang, it's still the center of mass. Uh, the center of mass, if you allow an object to rotate freely on its own, it will always rotate about its center of mass. So boomerang rotates about that point right there. Okay, torque, you should already know, is force times radius or distance from the pivot point. Okay, so for uh, this wrench, right, the radius is this. Uh, this is why if you're trying to unscrew something and you're having a hard time and you're using a wrench, if you get a longer wrench, it'll actually make it a lot easier because you can get a whole lot more torque if your radius is bigger. Same thing with screwdrivers, right, and round objects. So for a round object, if you're trying to unscrew a lid over here, okay, the radius, or if you're trying to, sorry, if you're trying to unscrew it, the radius is actually the radius itself as you grip it and as you try and apply a force this way to torque it around and uh, unscrew it. Okay, the larger the lid, the easier it is to spin it on a, on a screwdriver, the larger the handle, the easier it is to spin it as well. You can get more radius, therefore more torque. Um, if you tried to take like a little screw or a little nut and try to unscrew it with your hands, that's going to be really, really hard, right? Versus a lid is really easy to unscrew. If the force is not perpendicular to the radius, so in this case I have a door here, this is the radius, here's where the hinges would be. Just going to rotate this way, okay? And if you don't push the door perpendicular to that radius or to the door, if you push it at an angle like this, then the torque will only be relative to the perpendicular component. The perpendicular component is the thing that's going to allow this to actually move or, or rotate. This component of this diagonal force has no effect on its ability to rotate. So therefore, torque can be simplified as force times radius uh, times sine of the angle, where the angle is between the force and the direction of the radius. Okay, so that will give you... Uh, that will give you the torque every single time, and then you don't actually have to do the trig. It's done for you. Okay, you also need to know this term equilibrium. You should already know what that means. It just means everything's equal on both sides, right? So with our translational equilibrium, what that means is that means that the um, net force is zero. If it's the force is up and the force is down or equal, right, it's not going to move up or move down, or at least it won't accelerate up or down. Okay, rotational equilibrium. Okay, so it's going to be very similar, but it's when the net torque is zero. So that means all the force is trying to rotate it counterclockwise and all the force is trying to rotate it clockwise. Those are all uh, balancing out and it cancels out into zero as well. And similarly, it will not rotate or at least accelerate rotationally. All the problems we're going to deal with are going to have stationary objects. So therefore, we can always use this idea that the net force will always be zero in all of our torque problems, and the net torque will always be zero in all of our torque problems as well. So here's a typical problem that you can solve. We're going to solve two. This one's easier, and then the next one's going to be a little bit harder. So if a 50 Newton seesaw supports uh, two people, right, one weighs 450, uh, 455, and one weighs 525, uh, the fulcrum is under the center of gravity of the board. So in other words, this is the exact center of the board. Right, and the 520 person is 1.5 meters away. How far away should this guy be? Okay, and we want to know also what is the normal force up from the fulcrum? All right, to solve this problem, we're going to first figure out where is this guy over here? How far away is he from the center? And to start any problem, we of course draw a free body diagram with uh, whenever there's forces or torque. But with torque, we draw the forces where they're actually located instead of the center of mass. So the first guy, right, has a force of gravity on him. The second guy also has a force of gravity on him. He's a little bit lighter, right? And then uh, the board itself, right, it said it was 50 newtons, or that's how much it weighed, the, the teeter-totter. So it also has a force of gravity, and it's located at the center of its mass. Okay, and then finally, all these forces are down, but we need something pushing it up to prevent it from moving down. And the fulcrum is pushing it up. This thing right here is pushing it up, and it's pushing it up right also at the center, okay? So we'll call that normal force. 
and then we can solve. We're going to use torque to solve this because this guy is trying to torque it counterclockwise while this guy is trying to uh, torque the board clockwise. Okay, so we'll say, all right, the net torque should be zero. That means all the clockwise directions, all the clockwise torques, and all the, it should equal all the counterclockwise torques added together. Sometimes forces don't do any, uh, any torque uh, because they are they have a radius of zero, so we're going to look at that. First, we have to decide where our, our fulcrum is. Now, this is or our pivot point. This one's really easy because it's right at the fulcrum itself right here. So we're going to say this is our pivot point, so all distances are measured from this pivot point. So this force right here is right on top of the uh, pivot point, and so is this one. So therefore, the radius is zero, and there's no torque. These are the only two that cause torque. Therefore, the torque from this guy should equal the torque from this guy since they're opposite directions. So we get the torque one equals torque two. And we do some substitutions, right? So it's torque is force times radius. So this force times that radius, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, this force times this radius. And we're looking for radius two. We plug in our numbers, we solve, we get our answer. Okay, the next part of the question was to figure out the amount of normal force, okay? So in order to do this, I could try torque, right? So we could do the same thing, net torque. We know that the only torques is one and two, and we make this equation, and we created this equation next. But if you look at this equation created from torque, we can't solve for normal force. Normal force isn't in the equation. And the reason was because, remember, it didn't cause a torque because it's at the pivot point. So if you can't always use torque because some forces will not be in your net torque equation. Therefore, we're going to try forces, which will include all our forces. So that won't work. Let's try net force. Okay, so net force equals zero. Uh, that means all the forces down should equal all the forces up. So we're going to write an equation that says that. And then we're going to uh, plug in our numbers and solve. Right, that's our answer. The last problem was pretty easy. We're going to focus on this problem next. This one's a much tougher problem uh, and more typical to the things that people get stuck on. So if we have a 65 uh, kilogram painter that stands on a 15 kilogram board and it's held up by two supports as shown, calculate the force from the two supports. The first thing, of course, we're always going to do is draw a free body diagram. All right, so we've got a force of gravity on the board. We're going to put that in the center of mass of the board. We've also got the force of gravity from the painter. She's pushing it down as well. And then, of course, the two supports are pushing it up. Okay. All right, first thing, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate the force of gravity for the painter and the force of gravity for the board. And the reason I'm going to do that is because a lot of people don't realize this. Uh, in the problem, they give you the mass of the painter and the mass of the board, but they didn't give you the force. And torque is force times radius, right? So make sure you calculate their gravity, the forces of gravity, because um, it's force times the radius. So now that we have the, this force and that force, we can continue our problem. Last time we tried to use torque first. Uh, I guess we could try that. So if we try the net torque is equal to zero. Let's see here, where's our pivot point though? Last time it was really easy because there was a fulcrum and it was in the center and it was just easy to say it's in the center. But this this isn't quite so obvious uh, where the pivot point should be. I mean, it's, it's not even really pivoting, right? It's not supposed to pivot. So we still need a pivot point to calculate torques, but we don't know where that is. So I tell you what, we're gonna Leave torque for a second. Let's give net force a try and see if that method works. Uh, I know net force is equal to zero, so all the forces up should equal all the forces down. That's an easy enough equation. Okay, I'll plug in what I know, and I've got a problem, right? Because I don't know normal force one, and I don't know normal force two. So there are two unknowns. I cannot solve for either one unless I know one of them first. So, you know, it actually looks like I am going to need to go back to torque. So we tried this, didn't quite work. However, the nice thing is, is if we can use torque to solve for one of these, then we can use this equation, plug it in, and we can solve for the other one. So this is still a useful equation. We're still going to need this net force equals to zero. But it looks like we're going to have to use torque to at least find one of them because I can't think of a way to find it with this. All right. so. What if then, remember our problem before was we didn't know where the pivot point was. What if we just said it was just like in the center, like in the last problem? Let's just pretend like it's here. And let's just see what happens. If we pretend it's here, which of these forces actually cause a torque? Okay, so the normal force one will cause a torque, and that'll go uh, clockwise, okay? Uh, the gra force of gravity of the painter will also cause a torque, and that's also clockwise. We're both trying to spin it this way, right? 
Um, normal force 2 also causes a torque, and it goes counterclockwise. Uh, the force of gravity from the board is at the center, or at the pivot point, so it has a radius of 0, and so therefore it does not cause a torque. So it's going to be normal force 1 and force of gravity of the painter versus normal force 2. So torque uh, N1, torque of the painter, equals torque N2. Now, this is a problem, too, because remember how I didn't know these two forces? So I'm not going to know these two torques. So again, I have two things that I don't know. So I'm kind of sunk at this point. There is a way around it, though, and that is the problem that I'm having, and this is a problem that a lot of people have, is that I didn't pick my pivot point to be the right location. You can make any point be your pivot point. Okay, so you can, uh, it'll just change all your torques, but uh, like, so for example, if I, my pivot point is here, this is a very small torque because it's a small radius. If my pivot point was way over here, this is just now a larger torque. However, the math always still works out no matter where you do it. All the numbers will change around to, to work out, okay? So I'm gonna, I can move my pivot point. Where should I move it? Well, when it was here, the torque from, or the, this uh, force of gravity, the force from the force of gravity of the board was not in our torque equation, right? Because its radius is zero. It went away, right, in our torque equation. Well, that would be nice if I didn't know the force of gravity of the board, but I, this is something I do know. So it would be great if I actually had it in my equation since it's something I do know. The things I don't know is F1, F, Fn1 and Fn2. So since by putting it here, I got rid of this one, why don't I put my pivot point at one of these two locations? If I, for example, put it here, then this is the force that's not going to do any work. Or, or sorry, this is the force that's not going to do any torque. So let's take a look. If I rearrange this equation, get rid of that, right? I just put my pivot point over here instead. Now all of a sudden, normal force 2 is not doing any torque because its radius is 0. And now I've got these two trying to torque it counterclockwise and this one trying to torque it uh, clockwise. And so it's these two torques versus that torque. So the equation is torque of the board uh, plus torque of the painter equals torque of the normal force 1. Now, I don't know this one, but that's the only one I don't know, right? I only have one unknown, and I can actually solve. I'm going to expand this equation. Uh, I'm going to show you how I find the radiuses because that's sometimes a little tricky, and people don't figure that out. So if this is the pivot point, uh, our, the, the radius to the painter, that one's easy, 2, right? the pivot point to the norm the normal force one that one's that one's pretty easy so it's two and then eight more or sorry six more so it's a total of eight okay and then so we know this is eight this will be two and this one will be this is always the one that gets us in trouble so it's we know it's exact center of the board so here's two here's two okay so this is symmetrical so far so it's just the center of this part here since it's both tail ends are symmetrical. This was a total of eight, right? So it should be smack dab from either side should be four. So this is four, that's four. So that means that it's four away from the pivot point. All right, so this is four, that's two, that is eight. I plug in my numbers, I solve, I get my answer. Once I finally find the normal force of one, I can plug it, remember, back into my net force equals zero equation, and I can solve for normal force two. Now, on this, notice I had to use both the torque equals zero equation and the net torque equals zero, excuse me, and the net force is equal to zero. Let's sum up the steps that we're going to follow in order to solve torque problems. Okay, let's summarize all the key points to solving torque problems. First step, of course, is to draw a free body diagram, as always, and make sure you draw the forces in the actual location of uh, where they're located, the actual forces are applying their force on. Um, next step is to decide where the pivot point is. If it's obvious like our first problem, just put it in the obvious spot. If it's not obvious like the second spot, make sure you put the pivot point in a place that will get rid of an unknown force that you don't want in your equation. Never put the pivot point at a location where you don't, or uh, at the location of a force you want to know because then it won't appear. So always put it in a, the location of a force you don't want and you don't want to find. Okay, you don't know and you don't want to find, I should say. All right, so then the next step is to use the net force equals zero equation, or sorry, create an F net equals zero equation and create a net torque equals zero equation as well. So F net equals zero, right, is all the forces down equals all the forces up, and or all the forces left equal all the forces right. You can actually get two out of this one. 
Um, and then net torque is right all the forces clockwise or all the torques, excuse me, clockwise equals all the torques counterclockwise. And then of course you solve, you're usually going to solve using the torque equation first, not always, but usually, and then you can solve with your force one. Okay, and then just keep in mind that, especially when there's uh, diagonal forces, right, you're gonna use the torque is equal to FR sine theta, uh, but also keep in mind that if there's diagonal forces, you can get two net force equations. So you can actually get three, one, sorry, three equations total, one torque and two net forces. One for the x direction, all the left equal all the right, and one for the y direction, all the up equal all the down.